Welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. And as always, I have a very special guest for you. Someone definitely who's been in the business for over 20 years and rocking it out. Lloydy Stiff, a.k.a. Mr. Stiff, is in the building. He'll be with us for the next 30 minutes. So stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV. TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and it's such a pleasure to have a veteran artist in the building here tonight. In the building, in the house. In the building, Mr. Yeah. Stiff, Lloydy Stiff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Beyond Focus TV. Well, thank you for having me on, beautiful Lydia. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> See, I even have my tongue tied, twisting right about now. Well, I yeah. love having you here because for so many years, we go way back, definitely yeah. from different media outlets, so it's mm -hmm. great to have you here. Get a little... Bring everyone up to speed on what you've been working on, but I want to take it back a little bit okay. in this segment. Let All everyone right. who don't know, for our viewers mm -hmm. at home who may not be familiar with right. Lloydy Stiff and the Stiff yeah. brand, yeah, yeah, yeah. how this all got started for you? Well, Lloydy Stiff, all right, th this name is very proactive, as everybody knows, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so let me get that out the way right here and now, all right? Well, back in the days, like in the 80s, you know, I was going to school here in New York. Mm -hmm. Right, and I actually, we have a little crew, but I was like the dancer out of the crew. So one day, we're down in the basement playing music, yeah. And that day, we was going somewhere, so I was all spiffed up, you know. So I decided I'm not dancing, so I don't want to sweat myself up. Right. So my friend, them start bugging me. I said, yo, are oh, you so stiff today? You know what I'm saying? You're not dancing, you're not doing anything, you know. You're just so stiff. So the name is Lloyd V. Stiff. But Jamaican say light is stiff. So all of a sudden now they, them start calling me light is stiff. You know what I mean? And me as a performer, now they they they, they everybody think it's something sexual. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So we run with it. Sex sells, so we run with it. Hey. <laughs> and that's and that's how we got the name. Lloyd is stiff. It's supposed to be Lloyd the stiff. Like you're you're too prissy. You know what I mean? You're so stiff. You're Lloyd such a stiff. the stiff. Yes. You know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All proper, all but proper. you know, Jamaican mix it up and say light is stiff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like most Caribbean people, switch yes, it up. Yes, 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 yes. Let it relax a little mm -hmm. bit. I actually didn't know you you were a dancer. Yeah, man, all them wicked dancers. I mean, you could, could dance. I've yeah. seen you dance in your videos and stuff. But I mean, yeah. back in the day and eighties, and that's how the whole dance hall thing came mm -hmm. about. You know that dancing was a big part. Yeah, of Yeah, when Bogle and all them something there up in the nineties and Bogle dance come in, we used to dance on the floor. Take the middle of the floor, remember my friend them. Yeah. Go all the way down from the ground. I'm kind of old now. The back stiff. <laughs> back so, is stiff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the stuff, stiff is you know. staying in a different way. Yeah. So <laughs> now, you know what I'm saying? It's not light is stiff no more. You know, it's Mr. Stiff. Oh, Mr. Stiff. Yeah. Yeah. Big things. Big and, big and serious. All grown up. All grown up. Yes. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Because you've been doing this for such a long time. Yes. I've had different people even in, like... Steph has been doing this for so long. How old is he? I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, without revealing too much. I'm like, he's mature. Yes, I'm very mature. You're not old. You're mature. Yes, yes. You've been in this from a young age. Yes, I have been. I started um, performing. Uh, well, not really performing. I started um, doing music like in the 80s. Like the early, well, the early 70s. I started DJing. Me and my friend, again, in Jamaica. Used to go by his house when his mama, his parents is not there. Take out the microphone, I would start DJ or start following like man like um Brigadier Jerry, uh veteran artists like um Johnny Ringo, Dead and Gone, uh, Rest in Peace, my brethren, uh Lone Ranger. Uh my favorite when it comes to singers, my favorite singer was Dennis Brown, mm -hmm. again and a great artist. Uh Jacob Miller, you know what I'm saying? Of course the great Bob Marley, Jimmy Cliff, you know, so and um but you know, back in the days, like in the in the seventies and stuff like that, living in Jamaica, uh, reggae music couldn't play in my house too much. You know I what I mean? Say. It's it's mostly country and western with the Skeeter Davis, the Jim Reeves. You know what I'm saying? The Charlie Pride and disco music is Donna Summers and stuff like that. So it's like I think it's like seventy five 
or something like that when they came out with the first like reggae slash dancehall music Chikabao 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 Wow Wow um, we they did um, the song I'm gonna take you to the dark room tonight mm-hmm. put on your dress and I think it's I Roy or you Roy did the um, um, combination with the Chikabao yeah but that's how dance a little bit by little bit start coming in the house and that's how I get hooked and it's funny because a lot of people don't realize that mm-hmm. even though reggae is so embraced now, yes. before Bob Marley passed, it's mm-hmm. still in Jamaica was still kind of, same thing like Penn and Trinidad in the mm-hmm. early days. My father yep. said growing up there, mm-hmm. it was looked at in a negative way Pianize. to be a yep. pianist. Yep. And now it's Trinidad's, they have pan competitions mm-hmm. and panorama and it's, a, it's an internationally yes. acclaimed, but in the 50s and early 60s. Mm-hmm. It was not nice to be associated with Pan, and you would catch some licks. Your parents would get upset with you for yeah, doing that. Yeah, Bob Marley's a household name now, but back in the days, he wasn't. You have to go to the dance hall to hear Bob Marley sing. You know what I mean? Like singing songs like, see the hypocrite, the there. You know what I'm saying? And all them old music, mm-hmm. good music, but it wasn't playing in the house. You couldn't play those stuff in the house. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, Sunday evening is pure R&B, you know what I'm saying? Old, old-time singers. Patti LaBelle and all those, Sam Cooks and all those stuff. Up until today's day, on Sunday, they still play those type of music. They do. Yes. And country, and that's why country and West, yep. Reggae Gone Country, they have yep. a lot of albums. You'll see even Morgan Harris, the Gramps mm-hmm. did a country album. A lot of artists mm-hmm. um, yeah. actually do that. So do you have a little bit of country? Do you really, I didn't say you would do it, but mm-hmm. it's something you still appreciate? Yeah, I still, because I was raised on those type of stuff, so I still, like, I, lo- I love country music, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it was already imprinted in my brain, you know what I mean? So, can't get it out of my system, really. No. Absolutely, yeah. you know, and a lot of great influences, I think, when you come from such a variety mm-hmm, of music mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. That really does shape, you know. Exactly, help you diversify in your music, you know what I'm saying? can hit it from different directions. Yeah. Absolutely, and then fast forward, <laughs> late mm-hmm. 80s, your big track comes out. The track that you're internationally known for, till this day, people still listen yes. to this song. It was the AIDS epidemic was going on in the 80s, and I came out with my first song. Well, not my first song. Jamaican Girl was actually my first song. The second song was No Left Your Condom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was going a bit... Going back to the yes. sexual exactly. theme. Exactly, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> It was not left your condom, you know. I mean, it was a bit controversial at the time because you know, the even in New York City here, certain things couldn't play on the radio now, um, then like what they are playing now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. So, wasn't being played over the air, but in the dance hall, the DJs in the clubs they was pushing it hard, and that's all I get like that. That what was the song that take me to that threshold, yeah. And how did it feel for you, even though you know your music couldn't be on the radio itself, but pretty much all those local spots, people knew your music? Man, I didn't care one iota about no radio. I was still a teenager, just came out of school, just graduated from Tilden, you know what I'm saying? And um, my name is being called, yo, everywhere I'm going to lie to stiff, yo, he's... Fella till the nights and this and that. We were going on shows, was making money. I, I was just like a deer in the headlight. Right. Like, yo, it's me, yo. Well, hold that <laughs> thought. We're going to take a quick break. Yeah. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV with Lloyd Stiff. We'll be right back. Boom, bang. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with Mr. Stiff, because like we said, you know. In the building. The mature, the new, the the past the 2000s, the new generation, yes, Lloydie yes, Stiff, yes. a.k.a. Mr. Stiff now. Mm-hmm. So we're talking before we took the break, 
about how being a teenager, everyone's calling your name. Of and, course. And your song's not even on the radio. No. But your no. name's on flyers. Yes. The little Brooklyn Caribbean community mm -hmm. knew that song. And more than 25 years later, that song is still known. Still known. Still known to this day. And every time you look on YouTube, people keep on reposting that song. You know, it still has relevance today. Yeah, of course. The message, the same message that you were singing about all there those you go. years. There you is go. Still, when you make timeless music. Mm -hmm. there you go. And it's sad to say that AIDS is still relevant today. Unfortunately, yes. it, it's yes. still very prevalent. Um, AIDS Awareness Month is mm -hmm. the whole month. Mm -hmm. um, so shout out to Rutgers University. They've been doing a lot of AIDS education. Yep. Um, so it kind of fits in well with this. So yeah, you know, when they you should call me sometime. <laughs> <laughs> so when you when you look at this, you're like, mm -hmm. wow. I actually, do you ever kind of just sit back and even if you never make anything that tops that, because that's sometimes mm -hmm. another curse that a lot of artists have. You come out yeah. so hard, and it's hard to ever even top what you just top because it was so much of a hit. Well, um, me, I always try to top what I've done before. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's, it's hard sometimes because you don't know what the public really wants. You know what I mean? You might in the studio and you're like, behind the microphone, I say, yo, that shot. And when you go outside, the people are like, eh, mm -hmm. yeah. But to me, when I'm in the studio, I don't go in the studio unless, you know what I'm saying, what I'm putting down, it's good. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. I'm like I'm like my worst critic. Mm -hmm. Yes, even sometimes when the producers have to tell me like it's fine, I still find a fault. Whether my enunciation or pronunciation, I still find some fault. I always want to go touch it again. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when at that time when I did um, no lift your condom, although it was tearing up the dance hall and the clubs and all that stuff and the street dance and stuff like that. I went back and I answered up with um wind up a spin off from Admiral Bailey Jump Up. You know what I mean? And that song, I don't know because it's um Admiral Bailey Jump Up was going on, but that song surpassed shoop, Fly Past Condom in sales. Really? Yes. So after that we decided to do the album Skin to Skin. And at the time I was working with um Great the title, producer. By the way. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was working with a producer called um his, his name was Jassy Adi. You know what I'm saying? We're not really talking no more, but you know what I mean, still have to give him his props. He was the first one to take me to the studio and stuff like that. But we and then everything fell apart after contract issues. Of course. As always. You know what I'm saying? Me wasn't getting no money where I'm supposed to get the money and don't know where the money's going. Artists and get robbed all the time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? And still getting robbed to these days. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we was just thinking about the music, the entertainment, the performance part of it, and not the business part. Absolutely. You know, as a matter of fact, it just recently, I just set up my ASCAP account. Are you serious? Dead serious. Oh, my God. Dead serious. You know how much you could have been eating. I know. I know. Off of this? I know. Because that means every so, it's registered every time a DJ plays a song, yeah. every time it's on the radio, every time it's sampled. Just collect the just, check. Just, just, just recently hook up my ASCAP account. Well, better late than never. Always say I'm going to do it. Never had the time to do it. It's always busy. Because, you know, in New York, you know, I'm not in the league where the shaggy or, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, could mm -hmm. just go by performance. I have to work. I got to punch that clock at 5 a.m., 5.30, or 6 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. five days a week. So, got to put a roof over the family head. Got to put some food on the table. So, I got to work, 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 work. <laughs> so how do you balance that? And that's something I actually wanted to ask you because you have Mr. Stiff, Lloydie Stiff, the entertainer, and then mm -hmm. you have Mr. Mr. Moore. Stiff. Yes. Mr. Moore as the, father. as the nine to five, the strap hanger guy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's like a, a split personality. You know, you have to know to separate the two. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, when I punch, you know, I mean, as a matter of fact, a couple of years ago, a couple of my friends... They just found out that I used to do music. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I think you know that we into the car thing and the super, we go racing and stuff like that. Mm 